and welcome to Worship Online with Aurora United Church. It is Sunday, May 17th, and it's the Victoria Day long weekend. So I hope that you and yours are finding creative ways to celebrate in this time. Welcome. Worshiping online has been uh, made more interactive and enjoyable in part because of those of you who have continued to participate in some way um, adding to the joy of worship, of course. So we thank those of you who continue to offer your participation. And remember, uh, if you would like to take part in worship, please um, send me a note, drop me a, a line in some way, and I'll certainly get back to you. So we do continue to offer a variety of ways for you to participate in church life. Uh, be sure to check out our AUC website for details. So in worship today, we have Emily and Sarah, Sarah Crawley calling us into worship. Bill Newman will read scripture today, and Frank Pullen Barrett will share his musical talents with us. And as always, of course, thank you to Margaret Haney, our music direct coordinator, uh, to Greg Komar today, our videographer, and Bob Kiriakides, our videographer. Thanks all. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Uh, just a reminder to uh, watch the website. There's lots of good information there on a variety of pages. We keep you up to date with what's happening here at the church, at the regional council and the general council offices. Please note, we do have our weekly uh, virtual coffee time every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. So please join us. All the information is there on the website. You can also join us by telephone. So uh, if uh, you know of someone that only uh, can connect through telephone, please give them the telephone numbers that are listed on the website for virtual coffee time. Some of you are asking about how you can continue your donations to Aurora United Church. And so we have three ways for you to do that. First of all, there's our PAR, pre-authorized remittance program, our new one, e-transfer, and of course you can mail your offering to the Aurora United Church office. Check out the gift page on the website. All the information is there. And now we have an announcement from Bill Newman, Chair of our Aurora United Church Council. Hello, everyone. When the first case of the COVID virus in our country was confirmed on January the 27th of this year, we had no notion that it would wreak the horrible toll on the lives and livelihoods of Canadians that it has. It is unparalleled in our lifetimes and is having unimaginable impacts on our society at large. The COVID-19 emergency is also forcing us to look at how we operate as a church and to take extraordinary measures to ensure our continued viability. We have experienced a disruption of normal activity, a combination of reduced workloads for some of our lay staff, as well as a need for financial belt tightening. As a result, Aurora United Church Council has been forced to make the difficult but necessary decision to temporarily lay off three of our lay staff. The three staff affected are our church secretary, our music coordinator, and our handbell choir director. The staff members in these positions have been and continue to be important and valued members of the AUC family. Please know that this decision was not based upon how they are valued by our church, but rather on the need to be realistic, reasonable, and fiscally responsible during these challenging times. 
Their actual last day of work will be May the 29th. We intend this action to be a temporary layoff. However, it will be for an indefinite period of time, as it is uncertain at the present when the current restrictions on access to church buildings and gatherings will be lifted. Decisions on recalls will be made on a one-by-one -one basis based upon how the situation evolves into the future. We appreciate the hard work and dedication of all of our employees. We look forward to having everyone working together again in the future. Let us unite to be supportive to the staff involved as they adjust to this news and to their new situations. We pray for them and for all during these difficult and stressful times. And we look forward with hope to a time when we can be together again in the same sanctuary. Blessings to all. And so we light our Christ candle and welcome the God who we know in Jesus to be present with us in the spirit this day. Emily and uh, Sarah Crawley will call us into worship. Awesome, wondrous God, dark, deep, and holy one, we come to feel the mystery of your name. Green, growing God, Christ of many stories and disciples, we come to hear the parable of your love. Bright, flashing God, blowing wind and Holy Spirit, we come to speak to your gospel of fire. Distant yet intimate God, woven, puzzled, grained by time, we come to find the fullness of your grace in worship. Our opening hymn, God we praise you for the morning. mindful 
in these days of those who are challenged and stressed perhaps beyond their ability to cope. And so we bring to prayer today our hope for transformation. Let us pray together. Creator God, you are the heart of peace in an often conflicted world. You are the hands of healing among those who live in pain. You are the voice of courage for those who would surrender their hope. You are home for those who wonder if there is nothing else but exile. Remember us to mind today that your will for us is wellness, wholeness and belonging, regardless of what we so often see and experience in the world. We offer our words of prayer that we may be open to your way. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God calls us to full and abundant living. Thanks be to God. Over the last several weeks, uh, many of you have been sending us inspirational videos, and we want to thank you for sending those along to us. So today we'd like to share one of them with you. The coronavirus is giving the earth a rest. A wonderful reminder of our beautiful world in this Victoria Day long weekend. Enjoy. Typically, around the Lunar New Year, we see economic activity slow down, um, and as a result, emissions decrease. Um, usually, that only lasts about a week, and then uh, emissions rise again. This year, we're seeing a prolonged uh, state of that holiday level of emission. Nuestro planeta es hermoso, pero también extremadamente frágil. Y creo que ahora hay mucha gente que ve la contaminación causada por los seres humanos desde una perspectiva muy diferente. Así que creo que sin ninguna duda, para el debate sobre el cambio climático, esto es una observación que nos hace abrir los ojos. Bill Newman has our first scripture lesson. I am reading from the first letter of Peter, chapter 3, verses 13 to 22, 
where the author of the letter counsels followers to know their faith well enough to defend it. Our mission to the world embraces heart, mind, and hands. We need to be able to share the good news of Jesus, and that means a commitment to honest and thoughtful reflection. Let us listen to the word. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The Word of God for the people of God. Amen. Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying safe. Uh, this song's called Waiting to Happen. I wrote it a few years ago. You probably heard it in church a couple times. Um, seems kind of appropriate for what's happening these days. I hope you're doing well. This one's for you. Here we go. Stepped into a new town A million miles away from my everyday Black roads fade into cobblestones A thousand years right into my bones And like a tap on my shoulder Feels like the whole wide world Is just Waiting to happen, waiting to happen Feels like something's coming, feels like something is just Tuesday evening, and it's all changed Flash of light, a split second, and the world's been rearranged I can't see nothing as a running by Crying, security's tight at the departure side. A little kid standing in the rubble feels like more trouble. Is just waiting to happen, waiting to happen. Feels like I'm spinning faster, but like another disaster. It's just waiting to happen. Just like sunlight Always ends a darkest night It's like a sweet voice At the end of a long line It's like the sound of a newborn baby's head It's in this unknown wondrous path ahead It's like Sunday Oh, it always Oh, it happens Oh, oh, oh it happens Oh, waiting to happen.
bend Waiting to happen Feels like something's coming Feels like something is just Waiting to happen In final words to his disciples on the night of his arrest, Jesus encourages obedience to his commandments and speaks of the Holy Spirit who will be with them forever. I'm reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Thanks be to God for these words of Scripture. Amen. On the precipice of that time in the year when life and, and certainly our changed lives will begin taking on a different sort of rhythm and energy as the natural world greens and grows around us, I invite you to come to the quiet, to be mindfully present in this time, and to simply breathe as we rest into the sacred places of our homes. Let yourself be found. Come to the quiet. May God who comes to us in the things of this world bless your eyes and be in your seeing. May Christ who looks upon you with deepest love bless your eyes and widen your gaze. May the spirit who perceives what is and what yet may be bless your eyes and sharpen your vision. May the sacred three bless your eyes and enable you to see. Amen. If today was like last year at this time, we'd be in the midst of our Victoria Day long weekend rituals, and perhaps you are. Odd now, though, isn't it? that so much of what we say or do is prefaced by some reference to the pandemic. Well, of course it is, it kind of has to be for now. But it is difficult not to look back to May long weekends of the past, recollecting the fun and enjoyment of it all, certainly the, the freedom of it. First, the planning for it, where we would be and with whom, if there was travel involved, there's excitement in getting that all figured out. 
Many of our church families would have traveled to their cottages and trailers this weekend, opening and preparing, all to officially mark this major shift in our year, that shift that happens on so many levels. What proves difficult in this year, however, is in acknowledging that this time always or usually has so much to do with being with our friends and family. Well, spring has long sprung, and daily we see the evidence of Mother Nature ramping up to full expression as leaves seem to be exploding in their growth, and flowers and shrubs are doing their level best to fill in the vacuum left by humanity's inability to be out and about in the usual or, or normal ways. And yes, we are still restricted in our day to day. Restricted still in numbers of persons together and by age. That's the given now. But we can, even in this time, make the move outside as that in every year kind of lifts us out of our winter spirit still trailing along behind us as we shake off that snow we experienced last week. We will appreciate our parks and walking trails this year like never before never taking them for granted again, as access is slowly widening. We will remember this long weekend, possibly for what we were not allowed to do or were advised to avoid, but also too perhaps for how our sense of the world and our love of friends and family, our community, deepened. No doubt you will have heard some fireworks already in your neighborhood. You know, there's always that neighbor, there are always those neighbors. Is that you? Well, keeping the celebration candle lit, showing your national and community pride in the face of adversity. Thank you. When next you are out at the end of your driveway or on your front porch and you're banging and clanging your pots and pans and thanks for our frontline and essential workers. Offer a few bangs and clangs for everyone just hanging in there. Now that's a long weekend spirit. The power of positivity has taken a prominent place in the messaging we see and hear every day now. The creativity of so many is displayed in every possible way. It's incredible, for instance, to see children and youth making masks and uh, 3D printed face shields, um, sharing their artwork and videotaping their dance moves, singing and crafting and on and on. Everywhere we look now, there are stories of people coping by being generous, by reaching out, by giving, by doing what they can to help promising to do so for however long it takes to get us to a time when we are all made safe by a vaccine. I'm not sure what we all had in mind when we first were sent home or advised to stay in place and our churches and schools and places of business were, were shuttered when it became so undeniably clear that life as we had known it was going to change dramatically and parts of it as we know now, possibly for good. What did we have in mind then about when things would turn around and we could go back to normal or what we now have come to refer to as the new normal? Daily updates from Premier Doug Ford and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau have become lifelines for many who look to those briefings for hope, for good news about uh, continuing to flatten the curve and for life possibly returning to what was and for permission to be able to be with somebody other than our immediate household members. As we try to imagine, for instance, when we will return to church to worship, 
we know that there are so many factors to consider. And the answer for now is we have no idea. However, in the meantime, we will do what we can to hold each other up. And that's all of us, holding each other up, staying connected, to encourage and support one another and to remain a church community. Jesus speaks today about the Spirit abiding with us and in us. And it seems like a wonderfully descriptive word in this particular time. We can relate to those abiding things, like faith, like the relationships we enjoy, and places in the natural world that speak to us of the love of God as we have come to know it. Poignant when we hold up that knowing against what we have come to terms with in this time of pandemic. With all the positivity being expressed in this time, has also come the disappointment of hopes and dreams about getting back to normal, not being realized. Living with a question mark in the place where we wish for certainty to preside has proven extremely difficult for some of us. So how do we cope with both of those things so present in our lives? Well, we may want to consider the Stockdale Paradox, so-called, which references the lived philosophy of a U.S. Navy Admiral by the name of James Stockdale, who survived eight years as a POW in a North Vietnamese prison camp. When he was asked about his fellow prisoners, how those who came out the other side of that imprisonment, what, what kind of person survived, he talked about survival depending on needing to come to terms or on, on having the ability to hold two opposing but equally true things at once. That you must have faith that you will prevail in the end. And at the same time, you must confront the brutal facts of your current reality. And that's the paradox. We understand. We can do that. We are doing that. When we say to each other, we're going to get through this together. Yes, there is a world pandemic and it is horrendous. But let's listen to our medical experts. Let's get the facts and plan for the future, weighing them equally. And do we not have faith in the power of human love and creativity and resilience and kindness and good humor? Do we not recognize and believe that God is the source of our love and certainty and resilience and kindness and good humor, which means there is an eternal supply on which we can draw when we find ourselves slipping into a denial or despair. We think a lot about the future now. When, when, when? Sometimes we say it's driving us to distraction. For those of us at AUC, that could be said, is said about COVID-19, of course, but it could equally be said about our identity as the pilgrims we became after our church fire and the hopes and dreams we have held aloft for six years now of a new church rising up out of that plot of land that bears our hopes and dreams of the future. Part of coping in this time then has to do with keeping on with our faith that tells us that the Spirit of Christ abides in the past, for today, and in our future. That God is in our future, where we've projected those hopes and dreams. So perhaps we can, for today, release some of those fears that take up a lot of room in our thinking just now, having faith that we will prevail in time. And so in what remains of our Victoria Day long weekend, which surely we will all remember for the remainder of our lives, let it be memorable, not only for occurring in the year of world pandemic, 
but for those things we knew would abide beyond, beyond a disease's power to frighten and to change us. All in all, to those things on which we knew we could rely. Our faith in God and one another, our hope for tomorrow, our strength for today. Happy long weekend blessings, everyone, wherever you are. Amen. Our hymn, Spirit Dancing. Through the power of God's grace that we have received many gifts, offer your gifts to share the light here in our community and throughout the world. Let us pray. We are your witnesses, O God. We demonstrate the reality of your love whenever we care or share or dare to stand against the powers that diminish life. And all of our gifts witness our commitment to be faithful witnesses for you. Amen. So you're invited again this morning to remember those who need to be held in God's loving care this day within the silence of these prayers. So let us once again unite our hearts and minds together in prayer. Let us pray. God who dwells beyond us, God who calls us to dwell together, bless us now as we gather our thoughts in prayer. Send your spirit searching within our hearts and know us through and through. Hear our prayers and in your love answer. Through the thanks we raise for the wonder of the green and lively world around us, for the early morning chorus of birds, the seeds sprouting in the garden, for the breath of life we share, we offer thanks and praise. We give thanks for the River Bend Integrated Community Ministries in Saskatoon and the Justice and Life Program in Columbia. Here are thanks for the people who share our life, for the ones who care for us, and for the ones who need our care, for the joy they bring us, for the love they call forth from us, for the blessings we know in relationships, we give thanks and praise. For the wholeness and health of those same loved ones, for the healing of those who are sick, for the comfort of the grieving, for the uplifting of the tired, and the peace of those in turmoil, we raise our prayers of concern. Abundant God, be with those that yearn for your restoration and healing. Today we ask your blessing upon. Gord, 
Olga, Carol, Penny, Peter. Giving God, we give thanks for nurses and all who work in healthcare and medical professions. Continue to sustain and support their life-giving dedication and courage. Compassionate God, you are the spirit of gentleness. Raise up in us all a sense of dedication and a passion for justice to care for those on the margins of society and those in particular need. Because mindful that we are all differently able and that all have a place at your table. In this time of sheltering and place, we understand even more the sacredness of gathering, our need to gather, to share the joy of birth, and be close and give comfort when laying someone to rest. We are horrified at the disrespect and senseless acts that have occurred in Afghanistan. We mourn the attack on the maternity ward at Doctors Without Borders Hospital in Kabul. We pray for the injured, the terrorized evacuees and witnesses, and the frontline personnel and families. Help us to hear your call and the cries of all your people. Help us to listen for your call and those who can hardly speak and who suffer in silence. And for the many who are isolated at home, quarantined in ICUs, and families who do not get to say, I love you one last time. Sustain those who are depressed and soothe those who are so very anxious. As countries around the world take the risk of reopening businesses and other non-essential operations after COVID-19 shutdowns and stay-at-home orders. Support the small business owners, the workers who are at risk, and those who are unemployed. Give us patience and unity of purpose. Amid all of our changing words, O God, speak your living word. As we listen, as we hear, create within us hearts of love and breathe into our lungs the fresh air of new life. We offer these prayers in Jesus' name, the one who taught us to pray together to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn, Dear Weavers of Our Lives Design.
And so in this day's journey, life blessing moments. In this day's journey, a peaceful spirit. In this day's journey, God's healing love. And now may the blessing of God, the giver of every good and perfect gift, the blessing of Christ, the redeemer of the lost and broken, the blessing of the Holy Spirit, God's presence in our lives, be with each one of us and all whom we love and serve. Amen.